Hey guys, it's Greg Jones for Engine Builder. We are here at Prestige Motorsports in Concord, North Carolina, I'm joined by Doug Aiken, and we're gonna walk you guys through a little bit of their cylinder head development that they're doing on the Brodex Headhunter head. And uh, it's something that you guys are developing for high horsepower competition engines, correct? Correct. So we're gonna walk you guys through that process. We're gonna get uh, Corey in here as well to talk a little bit about it and uh, showcase what kind of goes into A to Z making a cylinder head more competitive. So as Greg was saying from Engine Builder is uh, we're, we're wanting to kind of showcase the cylinder head that we're spending a, a decent amount of time here to develop. This is the uh, Brodex. And it's a head hunter, it's a 15 degree valve angle, inline valve cil uh, cylinder head. And really we're trying to, to go to market with a competitive uh, uh, racing piece, whether it be drag racing, maybe even a drift racer in the small block Ford realm. So Corey, he's really the head of the CNC and cylinder head department. And uh, let him kind of explain the early stages of designing this. Obviously we've got uh, the head, we've got the high ram manifold, and then there's gonna be plenty of other options. So why don't you tell us a bit about how you go about designing from this raw casting? Well, the biggest thing that I had to worry about is there is no rule. So do I use a 2180 valve, 2200 valve? What size valve do you use? I mean, it's wide open. So went in there uh, on the solid works, did some development uh, in regards to valve, to piston, to ring land, because we want to get the ring land up as high as possible in, in an NA application. So I kind of went from the piston and worked my way up. Um, and based off of that, once we figured out where the ring land needs to be, um, compression ratio that we're going to try to work with, got the valve diameter that I wanted based off of bore size. Then I went into our Surrey profile and cut the seats as high as I physically can right now with the casting limitations that I have without welding chambers and stuff. Um, so I've got pretty much my seats cut, the intake is a 2200, the exhaust is a 1570. And after that, I'll grind it, CC it, see where everything's at, look at our piston volume and see if that's gonna work within our um, specifications that we're using. So it's kind of how where I'm at right now at this moment of time. Uh, I don't know. So that's kind of the early stage, establish the, the highest cut on the valve job using our Surdy profile. And then uh, like he said, establish the valve size, then we'll go in there and make some chips. So a lot of this stuff still starts by hand. You know, obviously a CNC, is great because we can automate it, hit the button, but it it still starts with you know a, a guy manually doing that and designing that port and using the piston as my reference point. Uh, you know, a lot of times where people want you just make the chamber and I'll make the piston fit. I, I don't like that. I like it where they both work together. So I want the ring land as high as possible, and I want my chamber this. I want them to work together and not just, I will make the piston work. You're just giving up power, at least in my mind, you're giving up power and I, I just, I don't want to do that, so. So there's a lot of discussions back and forth between me and Corey. There's always yeah. good, bad, indifferent, yeah. doesn't really matter, but what, what it is, is we want the best product for the end user, hands down. That's what it's about and uh, I, I'm excited. So these will be offered basically as full combination uh, anything from, you know, as small as 380 cubic inch to, you know, if a guy wants to push the limits of 434 cubic inch, really whatever your flavor is uh, for uh, bore and stroke, um, there'll be some limitations, but uh, do you want a little more stroke, more torque, or do you want a little bit higher RPM power? So there'll be some versatility. We'll have engine designs for the competitive racer, um, but these are also, they will be available to the, the, the public or any other engine builders. So, um, you know, you can take our cylinder head design, match it with the manifold. We'll have a combination from, you know, the rocker arms to camshaft, all of it. So that's what's uh, to come, you know, here in the near future. Up next, we're gonna show you how I establish the heights, uh, going to the solid works, using my Ringland location for any application and kind of, um, go into a little bit more detail on that and kind of give you a visual. So next up, we'll take you into the design room. 
Hey guys, yeah, so we we're just over there talking about how I established the seat heights on the head and everything else. I'm gonna go in a little bit more details of the ring land location and how those seat heights came to fruition based off the ring land location. So what you see here, I uh, drew a, a rough piston, this is nowhere near accurate, but a rough piston for a ring land location of where we want based off of our specifications on ring thickness, radial, and all that stuff. Um, so basically what you've got here is a cutaway and you can see there's your intake valve here well based off of this ring land location there's a minimum thickness that we want um, from the intake pocket to the ring land and based off of that I'll put the ring land in there and then from there I can establish my seat heights do I need to go down do I need to go to a smaller valve or anything like that that's kind of how we establish those seat heights so kind of working from the piston side up into the combustion chamber side is what we're looking at. We're looking at the whole entire thing, not just like, hey, make a chamber and then make the piston work. No, we want the best of both worlds. So kind of give you an idea. And then also too, I want to show you a little bit more things of stuff that we got in the works. Uh, Doug kind of talked about our valve cover, our billet valve cover that we're going to offer for the headhunter. And also too, along with our SS220s and our HR195s or pretty much anybody in a small block four range, we're also going to offer a billet valve cover to customers. So this is a current design that we have right now. Um, you can see here it's got some spring oilers in there. Uh, customers can either have them or not have them. It's totally up to them. Also too, what we've got it set up is they're adjustable. So if you want a 15 thousandths hole, get a 15 thousandths. If you want a 20 thousandths hole for your spring roller, we can do that. So it's all adjustable based off the customer's needs. All right, so just to kind of like highlight some of the features, me and Corey work together. He asked me a lot of questions. Our objective, obviously, not only making power, but just kind of fixing issues or problems that we see with products that are already currently out there. So there's a lot of little things that probably people don't think about. So highlighted in black on the screen there is our, uh, we're putting hat washers in there. Obviously it's billet aluminum. So if you're taking them on and off, uh, you know, it's not gonna carve up the, the, the valve cover. It's just gonna stay nicer longer. Um, he mentioned the spring oilers. And then uh, under the bottom side, you'll see we've spent some time. It's a bolt-in style baffle. Um, we have quite a bit of extensive research on baffling stuff and uh, so we spent some time there and on top of that so it's a, a 10 uh, ORB fitting so a guy could put a cap in there it gives you an oil fill location um, we can do ORB-10 fittings to a catch can uh, a guy could cap it off and run vacuum to it and they're both placed in the front primarily because it's easiest to get to and on a look standpoint it just looks better so one of the things we just talked about this morning even was the spring oiler option not only are we trying to design something to correct issues but we think about other pieces so do we want to machine and scallop the valve cover if it doesn't have spring oilers and we kind of felt like let's not do that unless you as the customers request it because what that allows us to do if we don't drill it then yes the the cover's not scalloped or whatever but maybe you grow with your combination we're talking a, at least thousand to twelve hundred dollar valve cover here so uh, maybe right now your combination doesn't need spring oilers but later you grow into a, a combination that needs that or it's uh, necessitates it so we could you know you could send that cover in we could put it back through the op and add the oilers later so that's kind of an upgrade option so to speak um i think he's got it with coil packs uh as well so if you're coil on plug we can offer you that option um, typically it's going to be based around probably the holly smart coil or fuel tech coil um, so we have that laid out and then uh, i'm not sure if you can see this other screen and it's the less glorious part of all this but even the fixture, taking the time to design the fixture, what we wanna be able to do is be efficient when we make this stuff to try to keep the cost down. None of this when you're building something great is gonna be cheap, not whatsoever. So can we have an operation where we can machine two covers at once? 
Uh, and so we look at all that stuff. Again, it's not just build a valve cover, sell it to the masses. There's a lot more that goes into all this. All right, guys, well, we want to thank Doug and Corey for showcasing a little bit of that R&D that goes into product development uh, on the cylinder heads that they're doing for competition level uh, applications and high horsepower applications. Make sure you guys are checking everything that's going on uh, here at Prestige Motorsports. They do a lot of cool stuff. And of course, make sure you're checking out enginebuildermag.com for more engine content. We'll see you guys next time.